Hey there, it's Justin, answering your questions from joinsufi.com slash knock. Today's question is, what is object-oriented programming? Well, object-oriented programming is a programming paradigm. So there's different types of paradigms on how you can actually program and write code. Now there's different programming languages that handle these different paradigms, but really what object-oriented programming is, it's about grouping code together to run functions within that code. Right, so like, for example, if I have a class, I define this class, and then within that class, that has it has attributes associated to that class. So there's certain things that that class can do and only that class can do. Now, if something inherits from that class, of course, it can also do those things, but that's an object. I can now move around that object and use the functions inside of that object. I can also map that to data, so backend data where it stores and stuff like that. But it's really nice because that means I can pass these objects around. I can write a new set of code that relies on using this other object. And this new set of code, you might have guessed, can be a new object as well, especially when you're using classes. That's, that's something that's found very much in Python. You use classes all the time and you create instances of these objects. So that means a copy of this object as a one single unit that you can then run functions on it to that particular object. Now, of course, there's a, a lot more to that, but that is in junction with, or, or in contrast to something like procedural programming, which is just a procedure. You're not taking the entire object, meaning I didn't write a class and then I can move it here. Instead, I write a procedure that I want to execute. So I call that procedure when it needs to happen um, in maybe other procedures, and it doesn't work quite the same as object-oriented programming, but the nice thing about both of them is they have different advantages for what you're trying to accomplish. What you might see a lot in big data is procedural execution because it can it can just run that one thing and then it gives it right back. Where object-oriented programming might take a little bit longer. I mean, when I say a little bit longer, it could be milliseconds longer, uh, but when big data sets, that starts to get to be a lot of data. Um, or a lot of time, so procedural is often used for that big data stuff. That's changing a little bit, but the point is here that object-oriented programming uses something called classes that kind of groups this code together, and we can pass those classes around and be used in other ways. They can be classes within classes, and they can also you know, pass to another module so you can actually import that particular object and work with it. Um, again, and it also works with, with actual data itself. So if you use something like Django, you will see that you can map your objects to the backend data. So object-oriented programming is really flexible and extensible because you can just move things around a lot easier because they're objects. Where function or procedural programming is not quite the same. You're not gonna be able to move it around as easily, although you can still use the methods and you can still accomplish a lot of the same sort of things using both kinds of programming languages. They're just different paradigms or different ways of doing things. It doesn't mean that one is inherently better than the other or that they're the opposite of each other. It just means that they're just different. They work differently, although they're both grounded in logic, right? So the computer has to be logical. So it has to go from step one, step 10,000 or whatever. So what you can look at with procedural is it's just about going through those steps and not necessarily adding another abstraction on top of it in the form of objects. The abstraction being something we can move around easier and it's self-contained and stuff like that. So if you have any questions on this one, let us know at joincfe.com slash knock. Um, thanks so much for asking and we'll see you in the next one.